I've been working on a new game for their ships for the last two months or so, and I think it's about time to show it off a bit. It's a game about designing, building airships, and having them fight against each other and against uh, things on the ground, like small people you can squash. So, starting off, I will show you the airship editor. You start out with a pretty empty area, and, well, this is an airship, so the very first thing you need is something to hold it up in the air. Unlike um, other things, um, this is done using something called suspendium. It's some kind of magical resource crystal thing that keeps their ships up, so there aren't really any balloons or anything like that here. We add one here in the middle, and now we need a bunch of other things. Most importantly, um, the suspendium chamber needs coal to run, so we should add coal store. Say right next to it here. The other thing that the airship really needs is crew. Everything in the airship's game is done by crew. Everything on the ship only moves. If you do it, there's no automation or anything like that. So crew are responsible for maintaining the machines, for feeding the machines coal, for shooting, for moving around ammo, for fire control and repair and everything. So having crew is pretty important. Take the quarters and add it on there. So these little green things here are the indicators of where there are doors where you can join up modules. So, for example, I can't put this module up here because, well, there's no ladder moving up from the suspendium chamber. I can move it here because there is a ladder moving up from the coal So let's do that. What else do we want? Well, we probably want the airship to be able to move. So let's add a propeller, say here. And, well, it's a game about fighting, so probably some guns look good. There's already a fair number of them, but they also consume a resource, which is ammo. So first that, uh, let's put down an ammo floor, say here. Okay, and then let's add some cattle guns. So let's add one here, one here, and I'd quite like to add one here too, but there aren't any ladders, so I pick a corridor, and I add a little ladder down here, which allows me to add this battle gun. As you can see, the crew automatically kind of arrange themselves to properly man all the stuff. While we're adding corridors, let's add one between here and here as well. And uh, that's really the complete basic stuff. If you want to be able to tell the airship what to do, then you also need to add a bridge. That's not strictly necessary. Without the bridge, the airship will just hang in midair and shoot the targets. But, you know, let's say you actually want to tell them what to do, so let's put the bridge up here. So, yeah, the game's automatically chosen a name for this thing. It's called HMS Visible. Let's stick with that. And let's try it out. So, you can have both fights which are just on your computer against the computer. And there's also multiplayer already there, so if you know someone else's IP, you can uh, host a game and you can join it and you can play it, fight against each other. For now, I'm just going to uh, create a local combat. Add a newly created chip here. And um, add some other thing, like um, the HMS Tremor. Okay, let's see how that goes. Note that up here you can see the cost of the ship, so our ship is a lot cheaper than the other ship, which is probably a bit of a bad sign when it comes to our chances. Well, so let's give it a try. Go. So here you can see the ships fighting now, they're shooting at each other, going for it, and so on. Let's have a bit of a closer look what's happening inside us. You can see all of our crew moving around. This guy here occasionally fetches coal when it becomes necessary. These guys here are in position to fetch my ammunition when the gas guns run out. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, we're slowly being shot to pieces. And, um, actually, the really bad thing is that the propellers caught fire. And it worse, well, um, we didn't really do anything about fire safety or anything in the ship. So, there's no way of stopping the fire. So, it's just eating through our ship and, uh, yeah. Okay, that went pretty badly. Let's go back to the drawing board a bit. So, why did our ship die? Well, it died mostly, well, because it didn't have any way of fighting fires. Because we didn't add any water supply. 
and fix this by adding a fire point. Well, let's stick it here. The other thing that we kind of want to do is we want to be able to actually repair damage. And again, we can do this by adding a repair bed. Say so here. Okay. Now our crew's kind of spread thin, but it's just about a minister. The other thing which made our ship die pretty quickly is that, uh, well, the other ship was a lot more heavily armored. Switch into the armor editor, and we can look at that ship from the outside, and we can say, well, how do we actually want to cover this thing? And um, right now it's only covered with basic wooden armor, which is probably not very impressive. So let's switch to giving it all the reinforced wooden armor. However, what's changed now is that the ship is almost too heavy to fly. With normal wooden armor, we have a service ceiling, a maximum height of 161 meters, because the suspension chamber produces a lot of extra lift. Um, once we really weigh it down with all of this extra wood, well, it can just barely hover above the surface. But hey, at least it's, you know, really well armored. So this is at least a better design than what we had before. Still, it's not great. If you look inside again, the layout of it is terrible. You know, the uh, wall is all the way up there. If, it, if they need to fix some fire, say, in the suspension chamber, it's an adventurous kind of path through the entire ship, carrying a bucket of water, for which point it's probably too late. So what really matters in this game is figuring out good layouts for your ships so that everything is accessible and so that the ship can survive. The ship can be almost entirely intact, but if its suspension chambers fail, then it's going to crash and potentially get destroyed. So, good layout is what really happens. So yeah, let's uh, let's save this thing and let's just do another fight. See if this thing is a bit uh, less dreadful at fighting now. Yeah, as you can see now, this here is the um, service ceiling, so you can't put it very high up now. Let's uh, put it here. And again, oh uh, well, let's have it fight against the HMS Trammer again. Still, you know, this is clearly, this is not going to go well. Let's, let's, let's try it anyway. Okay. You might notice that on the HMS Trammer, it has this lovely little flag. And in fact, you can design your own flag and add it to your ships as well. I'll get to that in a moment. So again, you can see everyone running around. At this time, when things get damaged, you get these little men running around and fixing things up again. And see them carrying their tools back and forth. Oh, but occasionally, of course, they get rather badly hit and they get injured or even die. This is also something that could be fixed with the sick pay, but again, it's not something we have right now. Still, it's, it's doing better, you know, it's not dying quite as quickly as last time. Ah, now, now exactly the scenario I warned you about has happened. The suspension chamber has caught fire and oh god, yeah. Yeah, so that's not so good. As you can see, ships don't just get destroyed wholesale or not. Individual modules can break off, can get destroyed, whatever. It's even possible for a ship that's crashed to keep on fighting once it's on the ground, assuming it survived well enough. It might even be a valid strategy to ground your ship to free up more crew to serve the guns so they don't have to move around call. And it's impossible for ships to break into multiple pieces if they've been shot enough. So um, that, that's all quite uh, possible. Indeed, it's also possible to ram on the ships, which can produce quite a lot of interesting there. Anyway, quickly on to the coats of arms. When you are editing your engine, you can also install the cards, and specifically, you can install your coat of arms, say this lovely specimen here. It will be displayed while you fight. And you can design your own coat of arms by choosing the major layout, such as this one or this one, by choosing the heraldic chart, which is the symbol that uh, is used. Which symbol you choose in the single player campaign will also give you a bonus. For example, if you pick a wrench, your crew is better at repairing things. 
or if you if it scales, it gets an extra income. Once you've chosen your layout and your thing out of charge, you can then choose what colors you want. Let's say you want blue. There is a important rule in heraldry that only certain colors allow to be next to one another. Simply put, and um, this editor actually forces it. And it's quite good because it tends to produce clear designs so very easily visible. Which, uh, yeah, but it still gives you a lot of gives you a lot of freedom around what you want. It really, really makes some really ugly things. Finally, the editor also shows you what's called the blazon. This is the formal heraldic description. So, for example, here. This one is Argent, the Scarf, Sanguine, and the Scales, Tillin. In heraldic blazons are rendered in a weird mishmash of Old French and Old English. But hey, it's pretty fun. I also want to introduce a thing that you can actually register your heraldic crest once you've heard the farms, once you've figured out which one you like. So it will be then associated with your name permanently. And if you go and find other people over the internet, they will know you by your terrible symbol of, I don't know, countercharged gold and orange wheel. Amazing. So yeah, that's all there is for now. The major thing that still needs adding is that there is going to be a single player campaign that's about conquering cities with your airships. And of course, there's a whole bunch of testing and balancing and adding extra things. There's lots more modules I want to add. There's lots of uh, details that need to be done. But still, I hope that within the next month or two, I should be able to release a basic version of this that you to have. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions, I'd be very happy to hear them. So uh, do drop me a line. And uh, thank you for listening.